Joe Rogan is a six-time MMA Personality of the Year, a winner who's been featured in three separate EA Sports video games. He went from growing up with an abusive father and being terrified of being called a loser to having one of the most popular podcasts and YouTube channels on the planet. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top 10 I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Joe Rogan, and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Keep improving yourself. You would constantly be working to make sure that you are always evaluating your perspective on life and always looking at things, meditate, constantly meditate. Make sure that you approach life with a, a, a learned perspective, like you're a better person than you were the day before, mm -hmm. and whatever you're trying to do, whether it's fighting, or whether you're, you have an art form that you practice, whatever it is that you're doing, you're trying to do better every day, and you never, even if you, you accomplish some, like when you, know, you accomplish some amazing work of art, that's just that day. Mm -hmm. The next day, you got to go back to work. Like, yeah. like if you have a world championship fight and you've trained for eight weeks and you win by knockout and the spectacular result and you're very happy with the result, you got a day or two to relax. Yeah, you got a day or two, and then you're like, F okay, now what? Well, yeah. you, now you got to get back to work. And if you, if you think that there's some place like a movie where you're holding hands with your loved ones and the and sunsets going on and the credits roll that's horse and yeah. we have this idea in our head that there's this place that you can get to where you've air quotes made it yeah and that. i'm here to tell you that doesn't exist yeah i mean I, obviously i'm not the most successful person in the world but on paper i've accomplished a lot of shit and it doesn't mean a goddamn thing <laughs> every f day every f day i get up yeah. and i'm like all right i better figure, figure out how to do this i gotta work on this new bit okay i got this podcast today i gotta be on point let me think about this let me read this book let me uh mm -hmm. you know whatever the subject is let me get all let me get into it you, you have to if you don't you're you're gonna feel like shit. rule number two exercise People are so crazy. They, they, they want you to believe, I don't have the energy to exercise. God damn it. Everyone does. If you're alive, you can exercise. I, be I believe that. I've been there. I know I'm a different case, but I've seen my dad there. And then here's the thing. Once he fixed up his diet, once he went to this carnivore diet, he's exercising now. Sure, he's got l less weight on his body. He feels better. And he has and energy. That's wonderful. He could have exercised then too. He would have felt sh for sure. Wouldn't have felt as good as he's feeling now. But to give people this excuse, I don't have the energy to exercise. That is crazy to say. Can you walk to the refrigerator? <laughs> yes. Well, you can exercise. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just walk around the block. There's a, there's 80 year old ladies who take yoga with me. They're, they're, they're f***ing really old and they're in there. They're, they're going after it. They could easily say, I don't have the energy to do that. But they don't. It's a mental attitude. They make a decision. I agree. Like, there's a lot of it's discipline. You're going to get people who just yeah, won't exercise. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to go to a CrossFit class and try to do the workout of the day. You don't have to go nuts and do clean and presses with 150 pounds. You don't have to do that. But you have to do something. Just get, get your blood moving. Your body has requirements. It wants to move. It really does. And when it does, you feel better. But people like to give themselves this excuse. I do not have the energy to do this. Whatever. If you decide that, that's true. But if you watch a motivational video, there's a hundred of them on YouTube, thousands even. You go watch one, you'll get fired up. You're like, F it, I'm going to jump some rope. You jump some rope, you do something. Just do some push ups, do something, do some body weight squats. You'll feel better. But it's also like learning that, learning that and having that as a part of your daily life. It has to be, you know, again, I'm not talking about someone like you who's in the throes of this autoimmune disorder where you're getting your hip replaced at 17. I'm not talking about someone with like serious degenerative illness. I'm talking about just a regular person who's overweight. You can do it. There's a lady who's like 450 pounds that takes yoga with me. She's enormous. She's in there. She's probably really embarrassing. Very hard to do. Yeah. You know, and she's in there. 
we could, anyone could do it. We can do it. And again, I'm not t- saying do what Michael Phelps does. I'm just saying just do something. Got to do something. We, but, we have f- up lifestyles. The, yeah. The lifestyles yeah. that people have are just, the human body is not designed to sit down all day. And it's certainly not designed to be stuck in traffic and be in an office and just be, you know, fluorescent lights and just yeah. sitting there yeah. in front of a f- computer monitor watching your soul get sucked through the, 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 the LCD screen. It's crazy. Rule number three, don't waste your mind bandwidth. Wondering why other people's success or wondering why other people are successful is the refuge of losers. Yes. It's a loser mentality. It's a loser occupation. It's a, it's a, it's a loser practice because you're wondering why other people are successful. Like, who gives a f- You can say you think it sucks, but to spend time wondering why someone is successful and hating on someone oh. for being successful... It doesn't do any good. It's like, what is that old expression that jealousy is, it's a poison that does the opposite of its intended? Oh, right. It doesn't affect the other person at all, but it poisons yourself? Yeah. It wastes your your energy and time. It, it just it is so, it's so indicative that you are insecure. Yes. It's like people don't realize how, what a giveaway that is when they are talking shit. You're just like, yeah. ugh, this is just showing me that you've don't like yourself well i figured out there's something that i figured out personally yeah. and that um i i try to relay this and i try to be more clear and more concise the way i relay it the way i look at it is that your mind you have a certain amount of bandwidth this is why i don't read instagram comments or twitter comments or youtube comments like i don't mean time if i read them it's an accident but to seek them out yeah. and go, like you have bandwidth I don't spend time wondering why I hate things or hating things or hating on someone or being jealous. You have, let's say, let's call it units. You have a hundred units of bandwidth in your mind. So that means there's a hundred units that you can spend on things you care about, or you could let your mind be occupied by some stupid Twitter feud that you're in with some idiot that you don't even know, and you could spend 30% of your Twitter bandwidth or your, your, your mind bandwidth on this, and then you only have 70% for the things you love. And then maybe you're, you're involved in some f- relationship with someone who's an idiot, and you're arguing back and forth with them. Well, there's another 30% that's gone. Now you, got, you have 40% left. You have 40% for the things you love instead of 100%. But if you, you only concentrate on the things you care about that mean something to you and learn how to do that, like you were talking about meditation, yeah. it's a form of meditation yep. because you're learning how to avoid the, the little road bumps and the ditches on the side of the road. That can suck yeah, your bandwidth. Can suck your bandwidth You can give them just a little bit and go, okay, no, no, no. But, like, or you could lean in. Like how you're saying when you stopped drinking, all of a sudden your career took off. Mm-hmm. You started doing well. Because more bandwidth. You had more bandwidth. And you had l- less problems. This yes. problem that you had that was rotting you away no longer existed. So now all of a sudden it frees up your time and you realize, oh my God, there's so many funny things that I could talk about and I have so much energy and I'm so healthy. I could just go on stage and have fun and then you're killing it. Rule number four, don't be materialistic. If you don't have a good grasp of, of what's really important in this life, and, 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 and unfortunately, a lot of times we need everything taken away for us to really understand what those things really are. Yeah. I mean, you can appreciate some things. You can appreciate a nice car or a nice house. But if you get really caught up in them, you are trying to fill up a bucket with a hole in it. Yeah. And it's never going to fill up. Yeah. You're always just going to look for bigger and bigger things to try to fill that bucket up. And, and you're going to feel full of anxiety all the time chasing that yeah. and there's no real there's no real satisfaction then that's why you know when you look at one of the things that people look at when you look at people that are extremely materialistic that you know wear the the most fancy jewelry and drive the most fancy cars and the biggest houses we always think they're shallow yeah. always i mean isn't that funny like the thing that you would look at in terms of like like markers for success markers is like material things are Mm -hmm. the big ones right they're the big markers for success the big house the that's the big one right big ass mansion look at this big everything big everything with a big rock on his finger yeah big chain you know big this big that there's nothing there there's nothing there and so ingrained in us from the time that we're born because it's hard to get that's it that's why it's a trick it's one of those things it's hard to get so you think you want to get it yeah 
because there's a lot of things that are hard to get that are worth getting. For sure. Right? I mean, becoming a great fighter is hard, yeah. but it's worth doing. Yeah. Because once you do do it and you you realize, like, like there's an expression that I've used before, but my uh, Taekwondo instructor said to me when I was a, a little boy, he said, martial arts are a vehicle for developing your human potential. Yeah. And I remember that. I mean, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, and I've used that many times to explain it to people. But that is the benefit of getting good at a martial art. Yeah. Like, you go through this difficult thing, and then through that, you reap all these personality rewards. Mm -hmm. You reap these character rewards. You reap this understanding of what you're capable of, right? If you are capable of making it through a brutal camp and getting up in the morning when you know you don't want to, that alarm clock goes off, and you're like, I don't want to run but you do it you go out and run and you mm -hmm. you do it every day and you get through it and then you're successful and you realize that you have this incredible endurance because of the discipline that you put in you realize that you have this incredible skill and this understanding of how to fight correctly because of all the time and the hours and the focus you're a better person because of that yeah. right that's a real goal but that yacht you know like the, 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 like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work 16 hours a day so I can get a bigger yacht and then you know I, I, I need a house with bigger windows I need a mm -hmm. it's there's a nonsense to that like look I'm not saying if you can afford a nice house get a nice house it's yeah. great to have a nice house but what I'm saying is it's not the end yeah it's the you 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 are the project. Yeah. Your mind is the project. Yeah. How you treat people is the project. Yeah. How you, you're, the way you are with your family and your friends and your loved ones and the people you communicate with, get better at that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the goal in this life. The goal in this life is how we treat each other. Also, if you want to have more confidence and self-love, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. Do what you want to do. Do what the f is it that you really want to do because if someone else is doing it you can do it it's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself it's like a golden rule and there's a reason for it and that reason is that we're connected rule number five make healthy boundaries if you don't have certain standards then other people will chew up all your time and their problems become your problems and they're not even thinking about their problems they're thinking about you thinking about their problems i mean there's many people that pawn off their problems on other folks and they think that if you're a good friend you're helping me like you're not a good friend you're not taking care of me you're not helping me I'm like you're not even helping yourself yeah the f are you doing for yourself like this is a, a trap that a lot of people get stuck into it's codependency it happens in a lot of relationships there's a lot of people that get involved in relationships boy and girl that they find that the person who is their their soulmate is also the source of all their problems and they're the curator of this person's life they're the, they're supposed to be like helping this person along because this person is like deemed them the person who's most important to them and it's like you gotta you gotta find you gotta find out what you know what, what is the what's the boundary where you won't cross where yeah. you realize like someone is becoming an impediment to your own happiness and success rule number six learn from failure I think here's an important thing too. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. And don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. Rule number seven, push yourself. There's purity in physical pursuits, right? Because it doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter how people perceive you. When it, when it comes down to how long can you stay in that pool, when it comes down to how far can you run, right. when it comes down to how much can you push yourself past the part where you want to quit, right. how far can you keep going? There's a purity in that, that it, it, it dissolves social order, all that bullshit. All the what people think about you goes out the window. It's what who who are you right now? That's right. Who are you right now? Rule number eight: Figure out the right path. You can only have so much success in this life before you start thinking that you're different than other people. You know, it's you're thinking that you're something special. No, yeah. yeah it's, you look if you're on a path, right? If everybody's on a path and you start off here, and then X amount of years later you're yeah. way away. Yeah, you could start thinking, oh, I'm better than all those. Yeah. But you're not. You're just you just have been on this path longer right. and you haven't fallen off of it. You've figured out what you need to do to stay on that path. We know a lot of people that were on the path at one time in their career and then something happened and they lost their enthusiasm or their body wasn't as healthy or whatever the f happened and they dropped off. 
I'm still on that path. Why? I'm because I figured it out. What is it? Keep going. Keep going. Don't be a. P Keep working. Improve. Objectively analyze yeah, your yeah. performance. Look at what you're doing wrong. Treat everything with respect. Treat all of your endeavors with focus and intensity and intention. Look at what you're doing and, and uh, pay attention and do the work. Do the goddamn work. Do the writing. Do the performing. You'll see me. I'll do four or five sets a night in L.A. Yeah. I'm doing 15, 20 minutes, half hour. I'll do an hour here. I'll go down to the Ice House. I'll do an hour at the Ice House. I'm doing two shows at the Ice House tomorrow night. Right. And I'm, I'm, I go. I go. There's no excuses. I go. You know, it's like, the, and it, to me, the way I've got it set up, it's great. My kids go to bed. By the time my kids are in bed, I leave. You're out. You know, I say goodnight. I tuck them in. I'm out the door. I'm headed to the club. I'm home in four hours, you know. And when I'm when I'm done, I get in front of the computer and I write. I write. I get up in the morning. I see him off to school. Go back to sleep, or I go to the gym. I get things done. Keep moving. Rule number nine: Get accustomed to stressful situations. Just dealing with stressful situations and the tank. Like if there's a weird freak out that happens, like how do you handle it? Like what what do you do? And I was saying that. The more stressful situations that I experience, the more I understand what they are and the more I can relax. But it's also like the ma a matter of constantly being exposed to these stressful situations where there's not a long break in between doing stand-up or a long break in between martial arts training where to, to, to the point where anxiety can build up. And then once you get into it, it's almost an, it's an unusual situation instead of a, a usual one. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. I was at home the other day, high as giraffe. You watching the History Channel? Yes. <clears throat> and they had this documentary on in search of Noah's Ark. And I went, oh, how about you go looking for the snuffleupagus while you're at it? <laughs> I heard that dudes are missing. Are you really gonna go? Yeah? Hey, on the way back, will you go to Whoville and get me some green eggs and ham? You f gullible prick. Whoa. Don't get me wrong. If you're religious, I'm not saying there's no God. I'm saying people are full of sh and that story sucks. Hello? Why do we have to believe it just because it's been around a long time and it makes no sense. If you tell the story of Noah in the ark to an eight-year-old retarded boy, <laughs> he's going to have some questions. <laughs> it's just a bad story. Even if you're really good at telling stories, you sit him down, well, Bobby, once upon a time, God was mad at all the people in the world. And instead of telling them what they were doing wrong and offering guidance, he decided to go ahead and drown everyone. <laughs> and he only told one man, a random man named Noah. Just picked him out of a crowd. He wasn't a special man. In fact, Noah was 600 years old and a drunk. <laughs> anyway. God told Noah to build a boat. And he and his family would be the only people to survive the flood. Because apparently all the other people with boats, their shit didn't work. <laughs> Noah magically got two of each animal to come to him on foot from all over the world. And they willingly boarded the boat and got into cages. And they sailed away. For 40 days and 40 nights, and civilization began anew. Eight-year-old retarded boy is going to go, Oh! Oh, there's a lot of holes in that story! Now I've got a special bonus clip from Joe on how to not be selfish that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know, where do you need to push yourself 
harder? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're still here watching and you promise, you commit, let's go Believe Nation. We don't just watch videos here, we do something about it. If you are gonna commit to taking action today, give me a hashtag believe in the comments below. I want to celebrate you. Some people get completely self-absorbed and they burn everything around them because they're only thinking about themselves. And even if you love them and care them or l appreciate what they're doing, like some people are amazing at certain things. Like, you know, we were talking about Hendrix. I mean, if Hendrix did beat his wife, I don't know if that's true, or beat his girlfriends. Yeah. But it's like some people are so good at what they do that like that's all they're thinking about. And they didn't develop these interpersonal skills or relationship skills or, you know, uh, whatever it's, you know they didn't develop a, a, a sense of nuance in terms of their perspective of the world or uh, a sense of uh, introspective thinking when they're, they're looking at themselves and being objective about how they interface with the people around them and and life those people that are just like wholly focused on the self especially pure narcissists which you run into a lot of them in show business and some of them it's not their fault you know you, you talk to them if you believe in determinism you know and you believe that they're a product of all the things that have happened to them and then you run down the list of all the things that have happened to them it's bone chilling i mean so many people that i know particularly in show business are there because of just a giant hole that they developed in their self-esteem and their who they are as a child they didn't get enough love they got too much abuse and hate and bullying and all these varying factors that made them push so hard to achieve success to let everybody know hey i am special hey i am something you were all wrong and then they but along the way they they burn everything around them yeah and it's i don't i don't you know i mean i, I don't want to it's it's possible to get there without that that's what i want to say it's like it's possible to get there without being a piece of shit. and some people think you have to be a piece of shit to be successful you don't you don't have to If you want 10 more awesome rules from Joe Rogan, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. And for some strange reason, because when you're legitimately talented, one of the ways you become legitimately talented is to be ruthlessly self-critical.